ABS CBS Sports proudly presents Yitzin FC KRL Football Club FC Dornoy Global FC Hello Philippines, this is the scene here at the Abellana Field in the Cebu City Sports Complex. We have a great game for you on tap tonight here on Studio 23 and in the Filipino Channel. It is the final qualifying match for the AFC President's Cup for Global Football Club of the Philippines as they take on the champions of Kyrgyzstan, Dordoy Bishkek. It's a must-win game for the Filipino team. They need to defeat Dordor to qualify for the final round of the last six teams in September. My name is Bob Guerrero and I'm joined with Darren Hartman. Darren Hartman, it's all going to come down to this. Which team is going to be the stronger? Oh, this is a huge game for Global FC tonight. Uh, we've all done the mathematics and they have to win tonight to, to qualify for the next round of the President's Cup. They will have to wear their their heart on their sleeves tonight and give them everything that they've got. Now let's take a look at how these two teams performed leading up to this last group match here in Cebu. Global played just a few days ago against Khan Research Laboratories of Pakistan. It was a very physical and tough game and uh, I guess we were all a bit surprised by how good this Pakistani team was, Darren. Well, I think this is the best game that we've seen so far in this competition. KRL just went out there and gave it everything. They worked hard for the whole 90 minutes. We didn't think they could keep it up. And then they started off the scoring with a spectacular uh, corner outside of the right foot. He tried to replicate it again today, but he couldn't. <laughs> a one-off goal, fantastic. And of course, KRL kept on battling. Global got a great shift out of Jeffrey Christens. The boys really tried their best. Christens was everywhere with their set pieces. The defense and the midfield of Khan Research Laboratories just too good for them. And in the end, the Pakistanis sealed it with this great goal from Adil. 2-0 was the final score. Global, of course, still has a chance but they go down in a tough game against the Pakistanis. In the first game, a few days ago, however, it was a much, as we see confirmation here, KRL 2 Global nil. That is their second game. But if we go back a few days earlier to their first game, it was a, a very stylish performance from this Filipino team. It's a KRL as you see the global is starting to take the pitch this is how things went down in that first match between Yitzin of Bhutan and Global FC or rather catch that this is actually Dordoy versus Yitzin the uh, second game and was one-way traffic for the team from Bishkek in uh, Kyrgyzstan five goals from that man Mirlan Murzaev who's in the national team for the Central Asian nation and they ran out comfortable winners, Darren. Yes, they approached the game very professionally. Uh, they, they scored consistently throughout the game. Unlike Global, who scored most of their goals in the first half. I'm sure there were Global representatives watching this game. Uh, obviously picking up the number 10 is their talisman. He's picked up five goals there. His fifth being a penalty in the 80th minute. And I think this was the last goal and maybe the best. A header from deep across the box, headed it over the goalkeeper into the far bottom corner. And they're a team on a lot of confidence at the moment. And they're going to be hard to stop. So they will have, uh, they will be looking forward to this game. Will be the champions from Kyrgyzstan. I've been told up to 17 members of the Kyrgyzstan national team are on their roster. So certainly lots of experience there. And they showed it 
as they dominated this overmatched team from the Himalayan Kingdom of Bhutan, 9-0 was the score. There is the confirmation. It's uh, pretty much a big route there. Dordor taking Heaton to the woodshed. Now, there was a game earlier today between Khan Research Laboratories and Yidsen. Khan were, ra KRL were the big favorites. And not surprisingly, they scored first from the penalty spot on that kick. Yes, it wasn't the best way to start, start the game for the Yidsen side, giving away a penalty in the first five minutes. Although they did contain for another 15 minutes or so, a terrible mistake by the goalkeeper allowed a tap in. And I think that opened up the scoring there. Until then, it was pretty close, and Yitzin were actually starting to play some football. And then here, not able to pick up their man in the center of the six-yard box, and he tucks away a comfortable header. And then a through ball towards the later parts of the first half. A little cut back inside. It's come off the post, and the goalkeeper just hasn't reacted, or he's misjudged the ball. And it's gone into the bottom corner again, and that made it 4-0 just before the turn of the half. And that's the fifth goal we see going in and it becoming a little bit easy now for the KRL side. Just too much class, too much confidence and skill. And uh, it must be noted that the KRL actually played a lot of their substitutes in this game. It made a goalkeeper change in the in halftime, it didn't matter. The goalkeeper does well here to lower the angle, although he's probably favoring one side a bit too much there, Darren. Which made it easier for the Pakistani player to disturb the nets once again. That's Kalimula, who made it 8-0 for Pakistan. The Bhutanese team picking up a red card late in the game. So, with that big victory, Khan Research Laboratories of Pakistan is in the catbird seat here in our standings. They've played three games. They have seven points from two wins and one draw with a goal difference of plus 10. Dordoy in second with a win and a draw. Global FC in third place. The way it works now is that KRL is through. They are qualified. Dordoy wins with a draw or a win. Global FC has to win to qualify second out of this group and it's got, their backs are going to be on the wall for sure, Darren. It's going to be a very physical, tight game. Yeah, well, we can all see the standings there, and it's going to be exceptionally hard for the global side. Uh, the good thing is that their destiny is still in their hands, Bob. They've had a day to recover. I'm sure the coach has had a good word with them, and they're all going to be very motivated for this game. Nothing but three points for the global boys today. We'll take a short break, and when we return, more pre-game action from here from Cebu. President's Cup.
2013 AFC President's Cup. Welcome back to Cebu. The fans of Global FC are out in full force tonight to try and spur their team on to a much needed victory against Dordoy Bishkek of Kyrgyzstan here at the Asian Football Confederation President's Cup. Let's learn a little bit more about the team that's representing the Philippines tonight. As you see there, one of their ASCALs, Dennis Wolf. Global FC were founded in 2000. They entered the UFL and won Division II in 2010. Won the UFL Cup in uh, January of 2011. They won a national championship as well. Are the defending league champions of the United Football League. And they're coached by Brian Reed, who Darren is a very, very um, uh, experienced manager. And he's got some great players as well. Well, obviously, Global have been known over the last few seasons to be very consistent, and I think they've carried that into this competition. I don't think they've had a bad game. I think they were slightly out-muscled against KRL. But as you can see here, their squad is full of good players. Uh, we hear that Joshua Beloya is going to be called into the starting 11, and perhaps that's tactical. Perhaps uh, we'll be seeing Dennis Wolf as we saw, uh, coming in into the second half, perhaps if they need to score a goal late on in the game. So it's going to be a very strong starting lineup. There is uh, Jason De Jong with the tats on his left arm. He will play a crucial role in the defensive midfielder position. Now let's talk a little bit more about Global's opponents tonight. The champions of Kyrgyzstan who have actually won this event, the AFC President's Cup, on two occasions. Gordoy Bishkek from Kyrgyzstan. They've also been finalists losing finalists another four times. So they've done very well in this competition that started in 2005. And uh, of course, Kyrgyzstan, one of the former uh, members of the Soviet Union, they have a long tradition of football. And their players are, as we mentioned, very experienced, many of them coming from the Kyrgyzstan national team. Talan Samsaliev and Ruslan Sidikov are the defenders, 33 and 34 years old, vastly experienced. One of their foreigner players is uh, Daniel Ni um, Armatago. He is Ghanaian. And there you see Murslan, Milan Mursaev, a very strong player. David Bruce Tetev is a citizen of Kyrgyzstan, but he was born in Ghana. And uh, he scored all three of their goals in their qualifying campaign for the AFC. Challenge Cup, that is for the Kyrgyzstan national team. And going back to Mirlan Murzaev, he was just in another planet the other day. He scored five goals, and we had a short chat with him. This uh, same situation is not first time. Uh, I have uh, such uh, score before. So that's why I'm feeling very fine today. I hope that uh, it's very big plus for our team. And, uh, for next game, uh, we we have a very high level preparation because, uh, as we as we know, the next team will be uh, will have a game, will play in the home. Uh, so that's why we should uh, be careful and uh, we will try to do best all the time. Dordoy Bishkek out on a mission, trying to win this tournament that they last won in 2007. But they face a very tough opponent tonight. Global FC of the Philippines will take a short break. And when we return, we will be moments away from kickoff here in Cebu.
2013 AFC President's Cup. Welcome back to the Abellana Field there on the right side in that yellow wig is Graham McKinnon. He is uh, one of the big supporters of Global FC. He was their coach in the last league season and uh, of course he played and coached here in Cebu for many years. And uh, it's good to see him back here from Australia. The pitch, the pitch is in immaculate condition and once again it is a fairly cool evening without a lot of wind and uh, Darren they seem to be ideal conditions for uh, attractive open expansive football I'm just not sure that that's what we're gonna get tonight with the stakes being so high yeah as you said Bob it is fantastic uh, conditions to be playing football we had a little bit of rain over the last couple of days and it's just softened up the pitch a little bit so hopefully uh, the ball will roll a little bit smoother, which will be good for these two technical sides who like to pass the ball about. I would say the only difference between the, the two styles of play is perhaps Global slightly the quicker side, and then I think Dordoy are just slightly fi uh, more physical. So it's going to be interesting to see how the two teams uh, face up against each other tonight. As uh, we mentioned earlier, Global must win this game by any scoreline to get to six points be second in the group Edward Sacopano on the right there are the other fellows like uh, Johnny Dalman and Nino Ochotorena and Brian Reed uh, quintessential Scottish manager coach and uh, for sure he is really steering this uh, global side to greater glory of course they sit atop the UFL at the moment or rather second in the UFL at the moment well within striking distance of Stallion Santa Lucia we are just moments away from kickoff versus global there is no eventuality where both of these teams go through because KRL is at seven points a draw will not help Global, a draw will put Tordoy Bishkek at five points. And into the next round, the last six teams, they will play in two groups of three in late September and then a final match. Darren, this, this moment never gets old, does it? No, there's, uh, there's always that feeling uh, of, uh, of achievement every time you walk out onto the field like this, whether you're representing your country or your club, there's just something special. You know that there's uh, that extra weight of uh, expectation on your shoulders. You know that you're playing for yourself, you're playing for the fans in front of you and anyone that's supported you in your career to get you, uh, to get you this far. And uh, for the 11 boys out there starting for Global, this is a huge game for them tonight. Nothing but three points. The captain, Sidikov, leading in the handshakes. The referee tonight is Gamini Nivon Robesh from Sri Lanka, assisted by Denia Gidara Palita Prakarama. Hematunga, also from Sri Lanka. The other assistant referee is Zheng Wei Shang from the People's Republic of China. And our fourth official is a gentleman who was the main referee the other day, Wang Di, also from the People's Republic of China. Global at three points on the table. Tordoy at four after a win and a draw. And uh, this is the starting lineup for Dordoy. Sam Saliev and Sidikov, more than 70 caps for the national team of Kyrgyzstan. And uh, Mirlan Morzaev scored five the other day. He will be a threat up top along with Tursunali Rustamov. For Global, it's only one change for Brian Reed. Out is Dennis Wolf, and in is number 30, Joshua Beloya. It's a massive game for the young Filipino Swiss player. 
captaining global will be from the polo Jerry Barbasso on the right wing. It's great to see the to hear rather this crowd. And I'm Darren Kanina Pasila nag nag cheer Jan. They're really nagbibigay ng uh, suporta sa koponan ng global ngayon. And that means a lot as a player, doesn't it? To have that cheering, that support. Of course it does. And just looking around at the crowd tonight, it's it's the biggest attendance we've seen so far of the of the three days of football. And it does make a difference, you know, when your team's down and you need that extra lift, you can always uh, rely on your support to give you that extra bit of energy, you know, to give you that extra bit of, you know, speed when you've got to chase down the ball as well. And obviously for the for the visiting side, you know, it's it's that intimidation factor as well. The renaissance of uh, Philippine football since 2010 continues. And uh, this is something new for the Philippines, of course, hosting a club competition. AFC President's Cup is uh, for clubs from emerging nations, emerging associations within the Asian Football Confederation. And it can be said that it is the club version of the AFC Challenge Cup. Hopefully it's not the first time that uh, the Philippines are get to host such uh, an occasion. As you said, we've done a fantastic job in getting this field in, in, in the condition it's in. And hopefully it's going to be the stage for a fantastic 90 minutes of football here. Play is underway. Global is in all yellow with a red trim. Dordoy in blue shorts, white stockings and white shirts. And Global is playing from left to right. There's a good look at Jeffrey Christians who was outstanding in that loss to Khan Research Laboratories. Yes, he's done everything he's been asked from so far in the, in the last two games. He's been energetic. He's, a, he's an extra option going forwards. This is Daniel Tago of uh, Ghana. One of two Ghanaian-born players in this uh, Bishkek team. And a chance here, almost with a bit of the ball there, was Vadim Karchenko. And it's interesting that the two Ghanaian players didn't start against uh, Yidzin, so they're going to be well rested and full of energy. Something that uh, Global need to be aware of. It was very obvious that uh, Dordoy did play their best 11 in that first game against Khan Research Laboratories and then they played a, an experimental side against the much weaker Yeats. And first action here for Musa Sonogo, the new Ivorian keeper for Global. I think for Global, the first 15 minutes is going to be very important. They've got to really stamp their authority on the game early. No early goals to be conceded here. And hopefully a, a couple of attempts their way as well to, uh, to get the confidence going. Here's a good look at Adil Bekbolotov. Be playing on that right side of the midfield. Starosta. Christens was looking for Josh Beloya. Cleaned up by Tagoe. Rustanov. Chance now for Marvel Angeles. He's going to go long for Misak Bahadoran. This is. Enticing here from Global. Badoran so shifty with the ball on his feet. Looking for Beloya again, but it's just gone over his head. Sidikov clears. That was a quality piece, quality ball there from Marwin Angeles. A very good reverse diagonal ball there to find Misak running. And Misak's done well actually to cut the ball back and get the ball into the danger area. Tete off to the right side. Looking for Kamzan Sharipov. David Bruce Tete, who supplied that pass, born in Ghana, has, has been granted Kyrgyz citizenship. So he does not count as a foreigner on this team. 
We just have a message here. We just want to say, Sarap Maglakbay with two go travel for booking increase. Call 02528-7000. For more details, you may log on to twogo.com.ph. That's the number two go.com.ph. Or you can like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. Just search for Two Go Travel. Thanks to all the folks in Two Go for helping us get all of our gear here to Cebu. And uh, that's a good catch there by Pavel Matias, who 25 years old, six caps already for the Kyrgyzstan national team. He took a break in the last game when uh, Maxim Agapov came out for a clean sheet. There is Gordois 25, David Bruce Tete in the qualifying campaign for Kyrgyzstan this year for next year's Challenge Cup. They won all their games 1-0 and he scored all three goals. So that gives you an idea of the kind of quality that uh, David Bruce Tete brings to the park. You just see here, it's just a left-footed pass swung into Patrick Reichel. He's done well to win inside a throw in and they, they maintain possession here. Oh, just caught out there. Ben Starosta, good piece of defense. And Starosta, he is a vastly experienced player, brings a lot to global. Kristen's looking for Beloya, but Tago is going to get there and shepherd that ball to the touchline. Ben Starosta, usually a midfield in the central midfielder, whereas Tago goes down, but playing at centre back today. And you've been impressed not just with seeing him in this tournament, but in the UFL as well. Just watch the replay back here. Nothing really in that. Um, maybe trying to claim that he was pushed. A little bit of acting there um, early in the game. But yeah, Ben Soros, he, he's a good, uh, well-seasoned professional. Uh, obviously, uh, growing up playing in England, he's had, a, he's had the exposure. And he brings that to the side. Um, whatever position he plays, very well-rounded and versatile, which is a coach's uh, dream. Tago colliding with Bahadoran. In the first look here, time we're calling the name of Juani Gerardo. Marwin. Misa, can he outrun 